A story without conflict is, well, boring. How much? 69, see? Call it. Heads, then. Well done. The conflict of your story is essential to give life to your characters. Without conflict, characters aren't tested, and there is no resolution. So, without conflict, you really don't have a story. But not all conflict is the same. A story's main conflict is that which drives the plot. To use Saving Private Ryan as an example, the main conflict is a group of US soldiers trying to survive their mission of finding and relieving from duty a single American soldier, one who had lost his brothers in the war. A story's micro-conflict is the set of smaller conflicts the characters face throughout the story. To stick with Saving Private Ryan, a few examples of micro-conflict include Captain Miller's landing on Omaha Beach during the D-Day invasion, the group encountering a sniper early in their journey, and even when the group is pushed to the brink of mutiny following the death of Medic Wade. Both the main and micro-conflict are easily understood and are easy to identify, which is why they are the most important to your story. But there's a third type of conflict that sometimes gets overlooked. This is the story's macro-conflict, or the overarching conflict within which all other conflict takes place, and without which none of the other conflict would occur. In Saving Private Ryan, the macro conflict is World War II. Without World War II, none of the events of the movie would have taken place. World War II is easy to get invested in because, obviously, it happened. Not only did it happen, but everyone knows about it. No one watching the movie needs to suspend belief to get sucked into the main conflict, the one that will take over and drive the story. But not all macro conflicts take place in an historical setting. Some take place in the future, or in an alternate past or on some alien planet. No matter where your story takes place, the key to establishing any type of macro conflict is plausibility. Plausibility is defined as the quality of seeming reasonable or probable. A plausible conflict is believable, one that won't prevent your audience from getting sucked in. But conflict based on circumstances that defy plausibility will create a barrier that prevents your audience from getting fully immersed in your story. This is the experience I had when watching The Hunger Games. If it wasn't for the performance of Jennifer Lawrence, I might not have finished the film. The characters were interesting enough and well developed, and the plot was well paced and filled with plenty of tension, but the story's macro conflict prevented me from losing myself in the movie. The macro conflict of The Hunger Games, the conflict that, without which, Katniss Everdeen would not have needed to volunteer herself in place of her sister, centers on a government sanctioned blood sport where youths aged 12 to 18 fight each other in a no holds bar mortal combat until only one remains alive all for the dual purpose of entertainment and keeping the post-apocalyptic society in line. This is the barrier I could not get past. A government-sanctioned blood sport can make sense, but less so in a technologically advanced society like Pan Am. Young boys and girls fighting to the death until only one survives stretch plausibility even further. But on top of the previous sketchy premises, I could not get past that the purpose of this government-sanctioned blood sport, where the youths are ripped from their families against their will, is all for the sake of entertainment and keeping the post-apocalyptic but technologically advanced society in line. I can't take that seriously. Watching the movie, I found myself imagining what the first meeting must have been like, what the conversation had to be in order to come to the conclusion that this was the best way to ensure peace. In any case, because I did not buy into the macro conflict of the Hunger Games, I never got fully immersed in the story. Contrast this to another post-apocalyptic sci-fi movie with a strong female lead, Mad Max Fury Road. Now, I'm not going to argue that one movie was better than the other. In fact, when it comes to plotting and character development, The Hunger Games is probably the better movie. However, when I watched Fury Road, there was no point when I questioned the overarching conflict. The macro conflict of Fury Road centers on a dystopian desert wasteland where, as IMDB says, humanity is broken and almost everyone is crazed fighting for the necessities of life. Within such a primitive world, humanity's entire swath of perverse behavior is believable. Within such a world as Fury Road, a blood sport where youths battle to the death as entertainment could make sense, but in The Hunger Games, civilization is alive and well. This doesn't mean that such a sick and twisted society such as Pan Am couldn't ever exist. It only means that such a sick and twisted society is unlikely to exist, which makes it both unreasonable and improbable. In other words, for me, Pan Am was implausible and thus unbelievable. The takeaway? 
Conflict is essential to draw your audience in. As such, it is also essential that your conflict does not turn your audience away. Once you've established your macro conflict, it is extremely difficult to change, because oftentimes, without your overarching conflict, you don't have a story. Of course, I shouldn't forget the obvious. The Hunger Games, both the novel and the movie, were mega successes. So that alone should tell you that your main and micro conflicts are more important to your story. However, if you are just beginning your story, take care to make your overarching conflict as believable as possible. The easier you make it for your audience to invest in your tale, the more likely they'll stick around to the end.